Hey everybody, just wrapped up Sabine River, stopped number five in the Elite Series. Had a really good tournament there. I was hoping to do, make a top 12, I was hoping to do a little bit better, but I, I'll take my 20th place finish. Um, I started out the tournament real strong with 10 and a half pounds and was sitting in 10th place. Um, and then the next day I, I didn't really catch them as good, but I caught them just as good on the third day. So. Had some great points leaving that tournament. I just wanted to kind of tell everyone what I did. Um, we didn't really have favorable tides for that tournament for the things that I chose to fish. Uh, some, some tides will help guys in certain situations, but in my situation, I didn't feel like the tides were in my favor. So day one and two, I chose to fish in Taylor's Bayou, which is above what they call a saltwater barrier. The saltwater barrier is there whenever the river flow gets kind of low. It start, they can close it and keep salt water from backing up upriver. Uh, so they had that closed. So basically that made the upper end of Taylor's Bayou non-tidal. That's why I chose to fish there. I had plenty of places to catch fish, but because of the way the tide was setting up, I chose to start my tournament there. Um, so the non-tidal stuff, I was basically running around Taylor's Bayou, finding anything I could throw a square bill on. I found that a lot of those fish were were real tight to cover uh, and I can catch them on the square bill but they also had some fish that was out in front of the cover away from the cover so the square bill kind of covered everything and I was fishing with just a just a, a six cents uh, 50 series square bill and uh, short truce and black very simple I started out with an expensive homemade balsa wood one because I really like that in title situations but I lost a hundred dollar uh, custom crankbait to a redfish so uh, this one worked just as well, and I actually started getting more bites on the six cents one. Um, so I stuck with that one for the rest of the time I was fishing in the Taylor's Bayou area. And uh, and then after it, the, I hit my square bill areas, um, I would move to uh, cypress trees further further up the bayou, and uh, would just go to flipping. And I started out mostly flipping with a, a quarter ounce Beast Beast Coast tungsten weight. And, um, and a three-aught straight shank hook on a uh, missile baby destroyer. One of my favorite finesse style flipping creature baits. To, and I was flipping cypress trees and laydowns with that. And then whenever I would get to a, um, they'd have this, these mats, we call them gator grass mats or dollar lilies, whatever, these little junk mats we would get to. And I would put on a three-quarter Beast Coast tungsten weight. And I would put that on a, um, Crawfather from Missile Baits, and the reason I choose the Crawfather over any other style of crawfish punching bait is because I can fit a four and five aught flipping hook, heavy duty flipping hook, and I usually use a hack attack flipping hook because uh, I'm using a bigger seven six uh, duck and rod, and that hook I know will not give at all. So. Uh, that's why I like the Crawfather because it's a small profile bait and I could put as big a hook in it as I want to for punching uh, with, with big braided line and big rods. Um, and then as the tournament went on, I probably should have uh, gave up on the non-title stuff as the tide went on through the tournament. And that's actually what saved me in getting into the, the cut after day two. And I would start running these drains that were coming out of the marsh but I needed the drains to be moving in some sort of direction and I needed a certain amount of water level in the drains for them to be good or else you would never even know fish were in them. But when the water levels got right, they, they were loaded and you can catch a bunch of them. So uh, I ended up scrapping my nine title deal in, in Taylor's Bayou and making a 40 mile run up the Natchez River during the second day of the tournament and only gave myself an hour to fish up the Natchez River uh, fish a couple of these drains and the tide really wasn't right but it was good enough for me to catch uh, enough fish to catch a limit and move on to the third day of the event and um, and then day, day three the tide really got in my favor for fishing these these type of ditches coming out of the marsh and stuff and and I was able to fish that stuff all day long and, and had a much larger window to capitalize on a good bite in that situation. That, that, that wasn't even really available to me um, starting the tournament, but that was more, there wasn't any kind of hard structure in these ditches. They were just straight marsh ditches 
going through this swampy, marshy area. So there was nothing but these little gator grass mats and some uh, sparse hydrilla in these areas. And that's where I really started swimming the uh, Divine Swim Jig from Six Cents. Uh, just putting a little sapphire blue trailer on the back. And uh, this was like black, blue, and purple. Uh, it's got these black eyes on it. This thing, I, I just really love this swim jig. And I was swimming this thing on on 50 pound Sunline braid with a seven foot uh, medium medium heavy action rod. I didn't want too much rod uh, because these fish were, were pretty small. They were in the one to two pound range and you didn't want to overpower the fish if you had too much rod with braid and a swim jig and a two pounder eats it, there's a good chance you could set the hook and that fish would, in this really shallow water, he would come flying out of the water and when he was in the air, there was a good chance he was gonna lose him and stuff like that. So I tried to match the, the equipment to the size of the fish. And uh, so it was, it was very simple for me. Day three, it was exclusively the, the swim jig, the Divine Swim Jig from Six Cents, and that is a uh, quarter ounce swim jig, and I felt like that was the perfect weight. And, and, and when I started the tournament, it was uh, the, the, the Baby Destroyer on Cypress Trees and the Crawfather when I was punching, and anything that I could throw a square bill around, I was throwing the Six Cents square bill, just the silent square bill from Six Cents. And, um, and that was it, and I kept it simple, and it was more about these baits, I can pretty much do whatever I wanted to, and it, and I wasn't really thinking about all the variables when it came to lure selection. So uh, I, I just kept it simple, and I was more focused on being in the right area. That was more important than anything, being in the right place at the right tide, knowing what tides to beware, and that was how I spent my practice, is trying to understand that and, uh, and foreseeing the future because it changed every day. Um, so. That was it, that was Sabine River. Now we are getting ready for La Crosse, Wisconsin. We, uh, I had a few days off. Uh, I know a lot of you expected to see me on Red River for the Open, but I went ahead and got out of the Opens uh, because I was it, it, the schedule got too tight with them rescheduling Sabine and stuff. So I just went ahead and decided to focus my efforts on the Elites this year. We're in a really good position to make the Bassmasters Classic, so we want to make sure that we don't slip at all in these last four events. So these last four events are gonna be a really good fisheries. Um, I'm really looking forward to La Crosse, Wisconsin. The swim jig will be a huge player at La Crosse, Wisconsin, so I'm glad I got to have me a good little swim jig tournament before we get there, and also the frog will be a big deal. So frogging and swim jigging next week, and I'm hoping that uh, I'm, I'm hearing stories like we can expect 50 to 100 bites a day. So I'm really looking forward to that, so stay tuned and I'll keep you posted on how we do across Wisconsin. And then right after that, we go back to back to Lake Wahi and South Dakota. None of us have ever been there, but supposedly full of smallmouth. And so we're switching gears from shallow water fishing with swim jigs and frogs all the way to vertical fishing for smallmouth. And uh, they may even be spawning there. So looking forward to the next two weeks and I will see you after the next event. Thanks.